Welcome everyone um, to our next press conference with the U.S. Olympic swim team. Um, in front of you on your screen, beginning on the left-hand side of your screen, we have Olympian Reagan Smith. Uh, next to her in the middle of your screen is Olympian, <coughs> sorry, Katie Ledecky. And to the right of your screen, um, all the way on the end, we have, um, we have Lily. So I will ask everybody to please raise your hand to ask your question or put it in the chat and we will endeavor to get to as many as we can. Um, we will start the questions today with uh, David Woods. I would ask you to go first. Uh, yes, for, for, for Lily. Lily, you've mentioned that, uh, you know, training, training every day with Annie has, has made you better in the 200 breaststroke, but how, but how is being around Annie and kind of, you know, sharing, uh, Annie's journey here in, in, in recent months, uh, uh, affected you, you know, outside the water? Cause it, it seems like it's, it's been, I mean, it's been profound and, and I don't know if you even reflect, reflect on that, but it's just been interesting to observe from a distance. Yeah. Um, obviously a horrible, horrible situation this, you know, over the last year, especially the last couple months for Annie. Um, but I mean, I think in all of that, overcoming all that adversity, it just brings us closer together, like as a team. And I mean, obviously the two of us are, are close and we train together every day, but there's a much larger group of us that, that goes into that family than just the two of us. So, um, it's definitely brought us a lot closer together, uh, you know, just just to be Great. We'll have the next question from Lane. Hey there, Lily. I think you probably know what's coming, um, but as you know, there won't be free McDonald's in the Olympic Village this year for the first time in something like 30 years. Um, so I'm curious, in Rio, how much were you eating McDonald's and what was your order? And, you know, are you a little devastated that it won't be there for free in Tokyo? Uh, I'm definitely a little bit sad, um, but I think Simone and I were eating McDonald's at least once a day in Rio. Um, but part of that was because the food in the village wasn't really super edible. So I think um, that was part of the reason we were eating so much McDonald's. But yeah, I'm a little sad, but... Um, I think it's, it's part of the evolution of my food journey to not have McDonald's at this meet. So, um, I think, I think I'll be all right. I think the rest of the team will too. Great. The next question is from Karen. Hi, this is for Katie, a 1500 question for you. Did you like the 1500 from the start or was it an acquired taste? Um, why or why not? And, um, what, do you need to excel in the 1500 be, be, that you don't necessarily need for the 800? Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I've liked the 1500 right from the get go. Uh, I didn't swim it until quite a few years on in my swimming career, like probably when I was 12 or 13 is when I swam my first mile. Um, I probably swam at short course before I swam at long course. so. It's not like I was swimming it at age nine or 10. Um, and so I think by that time I was able to just kind of take ownership of it. I realized that I was pretty good at it and I enjoyed it maybe a little bit more than some of my peers. And so I kind of owned it and just uh, continued to race it, continue to enjoy it. And I think I just like the work that you have to put in to be good at that race. Um, it, it requires really good pacing and probably more so than the 800, um, just being cautious up front and knowing how, how much you can push it. Of course, I like to be pretty aggressive with my racing, but um, you know, I, I like to try to put together pretty even swims. So um, just finding that balance was always something that my coaches taught me from a pretty young age and um, helped me with, with that pacing and something that I've tried to carry, carry through to today. Great. The next question is from Pat Forty. Uh, it's for Katie. A little bit off the wall here, but I'm wondering what your uh, experience was with the Jesuit Refugee Services, and maybe kind of how that resonated with you uh, during a time of uh, complete lockdown. Yeah. So over the past year, I've gotten involved with the Jesuit Refugee Service and uh, UNHCR. Um, they have an Olympic refugee team going to Tokyo this summer and. Um, 
got involved with the Jesuit Refugee Service in the fall for a fundraiser and um, very close family friends with, um, well, my godfather is a Jesuit. And so he kind of linked me up with JRS and um, really just learned a lot more about refugees. And, um, you know, my grandfather came over to the US from Czechoslovakia. And um, I think just thinking about what refugees and immigrants go through um, has really inspired me over this past year. And I think we've all gone through some really hard times and, um, and all that over this past year, everyone's had different experiences, but um, just thinking about what refugees go through is nothing compared to what we've gone through and they've, they've had to go through the same thing. So um, I've gotten to meet over Zoom, uh, Yusra Mardini, who's a refugee Olympian, and I'm really excited to meet her in Tokyo and connect with her, and I'm, I'm gonna be cheering on that team and um, really happy that, that they'll be there, and I know that they've been through a whole lot, so I hope that their stories get told this summer. I hope many of you tell their stories this summer. Um, they've they've uh, really shown a lot of courage, and I think uh, deserve a lot of, uh, eyes on, on how they're performing in Tokyo and um, yeah. Great, we'll have the next question from Christine. Hi to all three of you. Uh, Katie, a question for you. When the games were were uh, postponed last year, we spoke and you said, won't it be great when the world can come together and celebrate uh, getting past the pandemic and, and have that be a, a a signature moment, a touchstone moment. Of course, as we all know, that's not going to be exactly the way everyone envisioned back in March of 2020. And I'm curious if you, I know you're busy swimming and busy focusing on, on all your goals and your team, but when you think of what Tokyo is going to be like in the news today, I'm sure you've heard about no, no spectators at all, um, local or of course foreign. Any thoughts about, you know, understanding what they're going through in Tokyo and maybe, you know, the sadness that it isn't going to be quite what uh, everyone had hoped it would be. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think thinking back to when we spoke, Christine, uh, last year, um, when it was first announced that it was postponed. I mean, honestly, I, I think none of us knew with certainty that the Olympics would even happen. Um, it was kind of a dream that uh, the Olympics would still happen. We had no idea if there would be a vaccine or if the case count would start going down. You know, we were still on the, the climb on, on the first wave. And um, yeah, I think even though we're not having fans this summer, I think the world is still coming together. I mean, athletes and coaches and uh, volunteers, everyone is getting together uh, in this one city for um, the opportunity to pursue their goals that they've worked for for five years. And I still think that's a really beautiful thing. And I know this is gonna be kind of a made for TV Olympics. Um, and I hope that everyone around the world tunes in and still enjoys it and recognizes the beauty of the work that all these athletes have put in for these five years. Um, because I think it is a really beautiful thing that we get to go to Tokyo and race against the world's best. And I mean, I haven't raced anyone from around the world since 2019. So um, it's just great that we're getting this opportunity. And I know we're not gonna take it for granted or, um, you know, gloss over the magnitude of this kind of event. Great, your next question is from Dan Moriarty. Hello, this is a question for Reagan. How have you balanced preparing for a lifelong dream of competing on the Olympic stage whilst trying to navigate uh, life as a teenager? I just try to take it as it comes. Um, I think this has been a really fun ride and I think it's cool that um, I've been thrust into the scene as young as I am. Um, but I think what makes it all the better is that I get to share this experience with a lot of teenagers this year. Um, this is a very, very young team and it's really special that I get to share it with them. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity of being on national team trips in the past, whether it you know, be world championships or Pampax, and I've always been one of the only, uh, or if not the only teenager. So it's very cool now coming into this year, getting to share this experience with kids my age and kids younger than me too. So it's very exciting. 
We'll have David Woods. Yeah, this, this is for Lily. Um, no woman has ever repeated as gold medalist in the 100 meter breaststroke. So I was wondering if there was, if there's something, uh, something specific to that stroke that maybe makes it so difficult to maintain mastery for so long. And also uh, wondering how much uh, pleading you've uh, engaged in to try to get yourself on the, uh, on the mixed medley relay team. Uh, well, as far as breaststroke being hard to repeat, um, I'm not sure it's a really weird stroke. It's a very strange group of people. So um, I think it's just, it's, just taking a while to see someone repeat. I mean, obviously it hasn't been done yet, so hopefully in a couple weeks we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything super specific about breaststroke. I think it's just, you know, one of those events that just hasn't happened yet. Um, as far as pleading to be on the relays, um, I will not be begging to be on the relay. Um, I would love to be on the relay, but um, ultimately the only thing I can do to get on that relay is to swim as fast as I can in the 100, and hopefully it turns out for the best, but ultimately that's up to the judges. We'll have Rick Mace next. Yeah, this question is for Katie. Um, Simone had detailed at trials some of what she's gone through this year and, you know, is very powerful, very thoughtful. And I guess I'm just curious if, A, if you've ever experienced anything similar and if you think it's hard for outsiders to fully appreciate the time and effort and, and pressure that kind of goes into your sport. I, I think I missed the very beginning of that question. Do you mind? Sorry, I heard something about trials, but I, I missed it. Sorry, I was just saying that Simone had detailed at trials some of what she's dealt with this year. And so I'm just curious if you'd ever seen experienced anything similar and how hard it is for um, outsiders to I guess, appreciate everything that goes into the sport like this. Got it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think anyone that's been in the sport and has been at this level knows how difficult it is to maintain that level of success for year after year after year. And um, I mean, someone like Simone, she's been, I think on every trip since 2013 World Championships. Um, I've been on it since, since 2012 in, in London. And um, of course last year we didn't have a big major international meet, but um, you know, it's, it's, you don't see it very often that, um, you know, someone's on a team for, decades straight, basically. Um, Lily's done it, Reagan's on her way. Um, and it's, it, it takes a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's um, year after year of, of trying to be at your best. And I think all of us take the Olympic year, um, you know, the, the end of the Olympic year more seriously than any other meet. But that's not to say we don't treat world championships any less seriously. It's still the same people that you're racing against um and and all that so yeah it's just um you know it, it's this is a, a tough sport there's um no way around that and uh for me i've been very lucky to have really great coaches and teammates and um people around me my family uh supporting me each year and um you know i've i feel very lucky to to love this sport as much as i do and have been able to sustain that enjoyment of the sport and um, the level of success that I've had. And, um, you know, I, I, I love training. And so um, I'm kind of like in my favorite place right now. I love training camp. So um, I'm, I'm just enjoying the day to day and continuing to do that. And hopefully the end result this summer is, is really great, but you know, I'm, I'm just enjoying the day to day. Okay. Um, we will have Matt DeGeorge. Hi, uh, this question's for, uh, I guess, either Katie or Reagan, maybe. Um, I wonder what you've made of uh, working with Erica Sullivan so far in this camp. Uh, what's it been like watching her growth and uh, what's it like having her as part of, for you, Katie, that, that distance contingent? Yeah, uh, Reagan might be able to speak more on, on this because she's roommates with Erica, but um, Erica's great. And um, the three Sam Pipers, uh, Katie Grimes, Bella Sims, and Erica, they're all doing really, really well. And um, I know they're 
they're building off of their trials and um, working really well and everyone's fitting in really well with the team. And so I'm really excited to be in the ready room with, I guess I get to be in the ready room with all three of those girls at some point. So um, it's really fun. It's fun to have so many young swimmers here and uh, it just brings a lot of life to this team. And um, yeah, I, I just can't wait to see what they can do. Yeah, uh, Erica definitely has a heart of a champion. Um, I have had the privilege of being on multiple trips with her and have kind of grown with her. And it's just really cool to see um, the swimmer and the woman that she's become. Um, so I'm just, I'm extremely proud of her. She's been kicking butt um, and she's been on kind of a continuous path upwards. And I'm just extremely proud of her. And the hard work that she's put in for so many years, um, it's, it's really paying off in a big way. So it's, it's incredible to see. Well, the next question from Peter. Hi, this is uh, Peter Ball at The Athletic. Uh, for any of you, I guess particularly Reagan and Katie because of Stanford, had any of you met um, Tori Husk going into Olympic trials? And then for any of the three of you, what did she show you with that, that American record 100 fly? Yeah, so uh, Tori is from the same... LSC as, as me. So she's from Virginia. Um, I'm from Maryland. And of course, she's quite a few years younger than me. So we never really raced uh, growing up in that area. But she I know her club team very well. And um, when I was home for, well, really, the last time I was home was Christmas of 2019, um, because of the pandemic. And I actually uh, trained a little bit at a pool in Virginia because it's a long course pool. There, there aren't a ton of long course pools um, in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. So I went out to Virginia for a couple of practices and she was doing the same thing, getting long course uh, time in. Um, so I, I met her there, I think for the first time and met her coach and um, she was working really hard at that practice. And I, I knew she was kind of on the rise and was, I don't know if she was committed to Stanford at that point or, uh, I knew she was being recruited or, or looking at Stanford as one of her options. And so um, it, it was just super cool to see how she progressed from there to this point. And uh, she spent a lot of time with us at trials. Uh, she and Reagan kind of sat with the Stanford uh, group. So got to know her a little bit more at trials, which is awesome. And she fits right in just, just like uh, everyone else, as I said. Um, everyone's doing really, really well here. It's so much fun to just be a fan uh, at practice most days. I mean, there's always somebody going fast. And um, I mean, I think like Reagan and Tori were cranking out some really fast 50 butterflies this morning. So that was fun to watch from a couple lanes over. Um, and yeah, I, I just, again, can't wait to see what she can do in Tokyo at that stage. Well, the next question from Julian Linden. Oh, hi, Katie. How are you going? Um, a question for you uh, with an unashamed Australian angle. Um, you've been so dominant for so long in your events that um, everybody automatically assumes, you know, you're the favourite to win. But I'm, I'm sure you've seen now uh, the times that Ariane Tipman has posted at the trials, both in the 200 and the 400. Now, she's uh, telling everybody in Australia that you're still the favourite because um, you've been there, you've done that, and she hasn't. Uh, but, but how do you see um, where she is at the moment? Um, do, do, you, do you like the rivalry with her? Um, do you enjoy the competition? And, uh, and, and also, are you definitely going to swim the 200 in Tokyo? Yeah, um, I'll start at the end. I'm, I'm swimming the 200. Um, and... Yeah, she's, she swam really, really fast a couple weeks ago. And uh, honestly, it was, it was so awesome to see. Um, I, I think she's, uh, you know, really shown that she's really fast at uh, the international meets as well. And so I'm, I'm sure she's going to be great in Tokyo. And um, she's such a great competitor and somebody that I love racing. I think we bring the best out of each other. And um, you know, we haven't raced each other a ton. I mean, a, a couple of years, but, um, you know, I think we're, we're still um, bringing the best out of each other. And I know that we've both been working hard towards uh, our, our own goals for, for Tokyo. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure she's going to be fast. And so, um, 
I'm, I'm sure she thinks the same of me. So I think it's, it's great. It's, it's always great to see the sport continue to move forward. And she's definitely doing that for our sport. And um, it's an honor to be able to, to race against somebody like her. We'll have the next question from Aish from ESPN. Hey guys, this is for all of you. Um, how would you describe Annie Laser's personality? How is she at camp? I know it's her first Olympics, but she's also been a part of the sport and away from the sport and she's 26. So how is her perspective helping all of you at camp? Uh, yeah, I'll start. <laughs> He's like, I'm a loser. Um, yeah, I think Annie's been, been fitting in really well here at camp. Um, it's it's definitely, I would say, easier for the older rookies to kind of get into a group. It's not like, you know, it's not like this is her first team. It's her first Olympic team. But um, I think she's she's kind of finding her group and, and finding her group really well. And um, obviously, we train together every day. So um, still just, you know, getting in, working hard, doing what we do. And uh, we'll be ready to go in a couple weeks here. Yeah, I'll add, I mean, Annie's awesome. Um, as Lily said, they're, this is a very young team, and so it's it's great to have some older rookies like Annie who um, can kind of, I, I mean, I, I, I basically see Annie as a veteran. I mean, she's pretty experienced and um, just, just knows what she's doing, feels very comfortable, I think, at this level, and so she's able to look out for some of the younger rookies as well. Yeah, I haven't spent a ton of time with Annie because we don't really overlap practice-wise. We do great in events, but um, she's been a great role model. Um, it's been really fun to get to know her, um, you know, outside of the pool, hanging out at meals and stuff like that. She's just been very sweet and is definitely looking out for all of us um, young ones. So, yeah. Great. We'll have the next question from Karen. So another question for Katie. You had mentioned at the trials that during your one fresh air um, interlude, you bumped into Janet. You guys are both in rarefied air and being distant swimmers who have made three Olympics. Have you had any kind of discussions with her, compared notes on your experiences, or even asked her for any kind of advice? And then also just what your post-trials training has been like. Thanks. Yeah, um, I haven't had many uh, super long conversations with Janet recently, um, but it was really nice to bump into her in Omaha, and then she presented the medals for one of my races as well. Um, and she's someone that I've always looked up to. And um, I mean, growing up, we always did the Janet Evans set, which was, I don't know if you guys ever yeah. did a, a Janet Evans yeah. set. It was probably a different set too. Um, it was just a really tough, long freestyle and I am set. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think you know this, Karen, I'm kind of a student of the sport. I love the history of the sport. And so um, she's somebody that I, I kind of knew of from a pretty young age growing up as a distance swimmer and um, kind of studied her career and um, really uh, thought it was really cool in 2012 how she was competing at Olympic trials and my events and um, that was a really neat comeback um, to see up close. And yeah, I mean, she's just always been so gracious and willing to offer a piece of advice and um, just support. And it's just an honor to have her support. Um, and then as for training, it's been great. Um, as I said, I'm, this, is, this is like summer camp for me. I mean, it always has been uh, since London when I was 15. It's like, I, I love training. I love, I love this atmosphere, um, getting to train with the, the nation's best, um, whether that's swimming in a group at practice with different people or racing the guys. Um, that's been fun, uh, different. Um, really, you know, we haven't been able to get out of our home training base this year at all. We haven't gone to the Olympic Training Center at altitude or anything like that, like we normally have. So I think it's just been really uh, refreshing to be in a different environment, be able to train with different people, have, you know, Greg coaching me, but also have some other coaches and USA Swimming high performance staff to help with, with video review and just kind of review everything in training. So um, I feel like I'm in a good spot. I feel like this team is in a really good spot. and. Hopefully we can carry the momentum to Tokyo. Great, we'll have the next question from Izumi. 
Hi, this is Izumi from TV Asahi. This is a question for Regan. I'm sure you may have already been asked this question before somewhere else, but the Kylie McKeon from Australia has broke your world record. So how excited are you to go head to head with her in Tokyo? I'm super excited. She's been on fire this entire year. And, um, you know, I myself have had sort of a rocky year as, as a lot of people in this country have and around the world, but I haven't quite been as close to my times as I would like to be. And seeing her, um, you know, put up the times that she's been able to put up this year is extremely inspiring. Um, and it's made me really excited to um, have the opportunity to um, race with her again. It's been two long years. And I think it's going to make me perform a lot better. And I think it'll make her perform a lot better as well. So I think it'll shape up to be a really exciting event. Great. We'll have the next question from Elliot. Hi. Thank you, Bella. Um, Lily, uh, I want, I, hi, Katie. But Lily, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, I know there's the party line about just taking it day by day and sticking to training and all that, but um, you guys are in a bubble, but you don't live in a bubble, and you know what's going on in Japan, and it's, it's more than just that there won't be any fans there. They're in a state of emergency, and um, I know a lot, of, a lot of us who are going are a little bit freaked out, and maybe it's my age, but I'm wondering if any of that um, enters your mind. Um, honestly, I'm really, I'm trying to just focus on the swimming part of it. Uh, you know, we've got more than nine, 10 day meet, something insane like that, uh, much longer than normal. Uh, but I know that I'm taking all the precautions I can. Yosu Swimming is taking all the precautions they can. And, you know, the IOC is taking the precautions they can. They're doing everything they can to keep us safe. And, um, you know, if that's not allowing fans, then that's not allowing fans. So, um, I'm, I really try not to worry about it because that's something that's completely out of my control. Uh, just focus on swimming. We'll have Pat go next. Uh, yes, for Lily. Uh, just wondering, you've said a couple of times that uh, you come from four generations of strong women. I'm wondering what in particular maybe you've taken from that uh, generational line. Um, I mean, you take everything from the people that raise you, so um, that's just how it all happened. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, my great-grandmother played basketball in the 1920s, so like, um, I, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm from a line of, of barrier breakers and, and people that don't necessarily take the normal path through life, and um, it's just kind of how I am. We're, we're all very comfortable with being who we are and speaking our minds, and uh, I'm going to doing that and hopefully making those other generations proud. Perfect. The next one is from Craig. Hi, everyone. It's Craig Lord. Um, Katie, I just wanted to ask you and then maybe get a sneaky one in for all of you. Um, uh, in what way, if, if in any way, has, was your experience and the adversity that you, that you endured in Guangzhou um, was it helpful to your Tokyo campaign? You know, it wasn't the year after like it was intended. It's now two years later. But was was there anything that you take from that experience into Tokyo that you've learned from and has helped you? Yeah, I, th I think we all learn from past experiences. And uh, I think it would be disappointing if I didn't take some lessons away from 2019 and um, didn't learn from those things. And I think uh, it, was, it probably made it even crazier after 2019 that just a couple months later, we were all in a pandemic and health kind of was at the forefront of everyone, everyone's mind. Um, and I had just experienced that in a, a foreign country. So, um, you know, it was something where, you know, health is always my number one priority. I think it, it should be everyone's uh, one of their top priorities. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot of lessons about just, um, you know, some different things that I can do better when I'm traveling and eating and all those little things that um, when I'm traveling, I'm, I'm paying closer attention to. Uh, so that's one thing. And then I think uh, I just learned how to 
be as tough as I can be at that stage. I think, um, you know, being able to to turn around my meet towards the end of, of that week in Guangzhou, I mean, there were, there were moments where I just wanted to fly home. I mean, I just didn't think I was going to be able to contribute to the relay and um, my mile prelims, I thought I was going to have to get out halfway through. Um, so I was a little nervous about my 800, um, but I got up on the relay and threw down a, a pretty decent 154 split and um, just kind of rolled through the rest of the meet and came away with the gold in the 800 as well. So um, yeah, I think I just showed myself that if something like that happens, I can, can tough it out. And I mean, I, I really hope that I don't have a similar experience anytime soon, um, but you know, we're all human and we all get sick at, at different times and it was bad timing. And um, you know, I've, I've learned a lot and it inspired me to get back to work and train hard for the first Olympic year. And um, I've just carried it through this, this second Olympic year and um, just, just moving forward, just trying to be the best that I can be any given day. Perfect, and we'll have our last question from Alan. Hi, this is Alan with KHON here in Hawaii. So tonight, today was a big day for locally, fans were out there. How important has it been to have training camp in Hawaii? And it's such a unique place. Is there anything from the culture or your time here the last couple of weeks that you'll take with you to Tokyo? Sure, <laughs> I'll start. Yeah, I've, I've had a blast so far. I mean, obviously I'm very fair and going to the beach is not really for me. Um, I think the coaches have banned me from going to the beach, but uh, I've, I've just had a blast. The people here are fantastic and, and so gracious and just, you know, giving us three facilities to use uh, like that we've ever had two before. Um, so uh, it's just, it's been really, really fantastic. And getting to see all the kids come out of Punahou today was, was fun. I got to like kind of go out and talk to the kids a little bit, which is kind of me being in my element. Um, so it was just really great to be able to interact with the community and, and you know, have them be so gracious and give to us. Yeah, everyone here has been awesome um, from the staff at our hotel to the fans that or the, the students that showed up to our practice this morning. Um, everyone's been so welcoming and um, it, yeah, we're not going out a, a ton and uh, doing a whole lot in the community, but um, I mean, just the views that we have from our hotel, it's so nice and just such a nice environment to start acclimating to the time zone. Um, you know, getting closer to Tokyo. So uh, it's been a really great stop along the way and um, I know it'll serve us well moving forward. Yeah, I think everyone here has shown us such genuine kindness and everyone's been so friendly. And I think we all needed that after this stressful year just to kind of come here and everyone, you know, just helping us out, being supportive, being super excited for us. And I think it's it's been a great mood booster for all of us. I think we're gonna take all these good vibes from Hawaii and bring them with us to Tokyo. So it's great that we got to come here.